Yesterday, Alabama head football coach Nick Saban agreed to an extension through February of 2030 that will earn him $11.7 million per year, passing Kirby Smart of Georgia's $11.2 million contract. If It also has a clause in it that if his contract is less than the three highest paid SEC coaches are less than the top five nationally, then they can revisit the guaranteed compensation. The funny part is, he's worth way more than that to the University of Alabama. Since they've been on this incredible run in football, out-of-state enrollment has shot through the roof, and there really is no telling how much money he has made the university in total. Now, do I believe Saban will coach through the end of his contract, which would make him 78? I don't. But you have to pay the greatest coach ever the most because that is the nature of the arms race of college football. For everyone else around the college football realm, this isn't the greatest news of all time because while I don't think he'll coach to the end of his contract, I don't think he's losing his effectiveness anytime soon. It's amazing what a couple little Debbies and a pot of coffee can do for a person. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if at the end of the contract, he was blended with a robot and the Sabertron 3000 roamed the sidelines until the meteor hits or the aliens wipe us out. This also means that another group of young or troubled coaches will be able to either catapult or resurrect their careers under his tutelage and guidance. With all the money that gets talked about and all the championships and rings he's won, the biggest part of his legacy will be neither. He has helped so many coaches find success, give them the blueprint, and thrive in a cutthroat business. He's mentored thousands of young men on how to work to find success and change so many family trajectories, you pretty much lose count after a while. Now, football, in my opinion, is one of the greatest teachers of life. And if that's true, Saban is basically Gandalf. It's been an amazing run for Coach Saban on and off the field. And after this, you got to make Nick Saban the highest paid coach. Yeah, yeah, There's yeah. been a clause in there that if he walks outside one morning and he's not the highest paid football coach, then he gets to beat up the athletic director the minute he walks through the door. <laughs> but now th this is obvious. The real question is how long is Saban going to go? Okay. The two main questions, how long will he go and who's going to replace him? You already know who I think is going to replace him. I th think it's Bill O'Brien. Mm -hmm. All right, now, do you think he works this contract all the way through, Cone? Do you think he's 78 years old, out there still doing it? Joe That's Paul funny. was 130 That's when he funny retired. you ask, because that was the question I was going to ask you. I was trying to think last night, if, the, if there were a betting line on whether Nick Saban walks away after this year if he wins the national championship, which is, is feasible, right? This could be his last year if he won a national title, or if, if, if he... Uh, lives out the the entirety of this extension through 2030, which one would be more likely? I honestly wouldn't be surprised at either one. You know, I mean, he could really be coaching football in 2030. We laugh about the Sabertron, but he really could. And as far as being the highest paid coach, it just makes sense. When you can't even fit all the rings you have on one hand yeah. and, and, the, and the other guys who are next closest have a couple at most, yeah, I mean, it makes sense that you're the highest paid coach year in and year out. I think Alabama's taking care of him and he's taking care of Alabama. And I don't just mean the school, I mean the entire state. And what's most impressive to me is his ability to be holistic in his approach to the program. You talk about it all the time, him building a program. He's obviously been the greatest defensive mind in college football for a long time, all the way going back to working with Bill Belichick at the Cleveland Browns and staying in there and studying the film. But a lot of guys know the X's and O's. His ability to build an entire program, to recruit the best players, to convince them that he is the best option, to convince those mothers and fathers that they need to send their kid to Nick Saban for tutelage. He's going to send him to the NFL. He's going to take care of them. They're going to win national championships. They're going to win Heisman trophies. It really has been incredible. My question is, is, are they beatable this season? Are I mean, they beatable? I, I mean, I, I think everybody is beatable, especially in, in college football. I, I don't think they're going to lose a game. Uh, again, does that mean that that you know it's impossible to beat them or are they not going to slip up? No, we've seen Alabama slip up before. We've seen really, really good teams slip up before. And when you play that many games, I mean, you're looking to go 15-0. and 0. It's tough to be perfect. I mean, I was watching Friday Night Lights uh, last night as we get ready for football. The movie or the, movie show? Or the show? The movie. Okay, Darby Lou was watching the show last night. He was night. watching the yeah. show last night. You know night. it's football well, season. Well, you know that the real Coach Gaines passed away. I heard that. So, I heard he passed uh, But away. here's what Nick Saban's done to me. There's a lot of guys that know X's and O's really well. There is, there is a bunch that can tell you every adjustment you need to make, everything that they're seeing on film. Mm -hmm. But Nick Saban, you know, you, you have the recipe, right? It's like KFC. Like, there's special blends of herbs and spices. Sometimes people just figure out the perfect recipe. And sometimes it's by accident. Sometimes it's through experience. Now, obviously, being with Bill Belichick and, and learning from him, 
from an overall capacity standpoint, but Nick Saban has, has found the right mix, the perfect mix from being able to be schematical, but to build a program. Everything that you need, all the I's dotted, all the T's crossed, because when Nick Saban takes a job and comes in, the janitors get replaced. The people working in the cafeteria get replaced. It's not just the coaches, not just a lot of the players. He has a whole system. It's like the, the body by Jake, but it's programmed by Saban. That's what he has. He could sell it as an infomercial. If you could bottle it, it would be worth millions of dollars. And it's just like great CEOs, like, like the guy at Home Depot and places like this. When you find the recipe to build a monster and you are smart enough and not stubborn enough to be malleable enough mm -hmm. to change it over time as either the market adjusts if it's a business or the game adjusts if it's a sport, that is how you get a Nick Saban. And they don't come around a lot. Yeah. And, and he is the, the guy that pulled the sword out of the stone in college football, Blaine. I mean, yeah, we're, gonna, we're never going to see anything like Nick Saban ever again. You think so? Never again. You think they said the same the thing about Bear Bryant? No. I, the, the dominance, first of all, Nick Saban's the greatest coach ever. I agree. It's not close. In my opinion, it's not close. So the, what, what he's done in the era that we're in right now, mm -hmm. I think that Nick Saban will be a one-on-one. After this, you won't see this type of domination in college football. To be surprised with you, I mean, this guy's more important than the president. I'm so, I, I wonder the amount of assassination attempts on Nick Saban's life. Probably more than probably a, think. It'd probably surprise you. It legitimately probably surprise you. Am I surprised Nick Saban's the highest paid coach in college football? No, pay him more. It's not enough. <laughs> it's not enough. No, it's um, to guy, to, I mean, who works harder than Saban? He figured it out. I mean, he's basically Indiana Jones and found the skulls. <laughs> he figured it out from, from, from A to Z. I mean, what has he not done? Um, I, I think about this year, are they beatable? For sure, any team's beatable. You go back last year, I mean, lost to an A&M team they were better than. Lost to an Auburn team, uh, one, well, beat an Auburn team that they were way better than. Just a complete collapse. For, qu for four quarters. In but, Jordan Hare. In Jordan Hare, true, but Weird they showed you happens. how elite they were in that yeah. last drive and really, when it really came down to it, what do they do? Mm. They clutch it up because they got the guys. Yeah. They, in they get installed early, early, early when they get to Alabama. What, what needs to be done, how it needs to be done, and it's the closest thing for, yeah. to an NFL program that we see in college. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what else needs to be done. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, turn on that bell for notifications, we're bringing it every morning. We have a Sunday recap as well we're going to start doing here soon. Blaine, there's a club in here. It's called the Booster Club. What's going on in that club I just said? Dylan Meadows, first of all, what's up, Booster Club? Glad you're here. Dylan Meadows says, with the way college football is trending, he will not reach that eight years. Three tops, especially, uh, but he does think he'll win at least one more natty. He, I, again, I'm going back to what Cone said. If they win it this year and they just run through it, and they're one of the most dominant teams that, like we think they are in, in the past 15 years. Really, the only thing left, and, and even to this point, the only thing left is that this is part of this guy's DNA. Mm -hmm. Like to me, I, I said yesterday, it's kind of like when you hear about the, the couple that, that had been married for 60 years and one of them passes away and then the next one passes yep. away the next month. And you're like, how does that happen? Like I... It is a part of Joe Paterno mm -hmm. gets out of coaching, passes away, you know, very quickly after. Sometimes it's just part of you. Yeah. And I'm not saying it would happen to Nick Saban or that or that, you know, one month after Nick Saban gets done, something bad's gonna happen. I think he's actually gonna go into the booth. I think he's gonna be a guy you do. that you see, see not 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 commentates coach, the games, you know? but like you'll see him on game day. So if you'll I told you that this. one of these two things will happen. Alabama will win the national championship and he will retire after this season and then goes on and does something like that. Or he will live out the entirety of this contract to 2030. Which would you say is going to happen? I would, I would take the former. Uh, I, I, th what I about think. You? I, oh, he's going. Uh, what is one more national championship than Nick Saban? Okay. I mean, so you think he rides? You think, you almost, think he rides the? You think I'm gonna sit here and doubt long? Nick Saban? You think I would take the? It's under? not doubting. You doubting, think I'm gonna take the under with it's Nick Saban? Doubting, well, I mean, why? So, well, I mean, why? Why even do the contract? Because you want to be the highest paid coach. Look, it's an ego thing. He's got Nick Saban don't need money. Look, he's never going to live out a contract yeah, yeah, because like, in two years he'll get extended to 2040. That's exactly but, right. But I just mean no. like to 2030. Do you think he goes? What, what do you mean? Though, when he has a clause in there, this is what happens. Nick Saban, become, this, look at this cycle of this. 
Nick Saban becomes the highest paid head coach. Then, as the market increases, a Kirby Smart or a James Franklin or a Jimbo Fisher gets paid more. And in that contract, the clause has them, they have to renegotiate if he is not basically the highest paid coach in the country. That's one of the main clauses in his contract. But Nick Saban doesn't need money. This is an ego thing. I'm Nick Saban. I need to be paid the most. That's all. And he's right. He's right. He's probably underpaid. He should probably be getting paid by the SEC, too, and the SEC network, and college football in general. So I don't know if he goes to a booth afterwards. If anything, man, go sit at the lake. Nah, I'm not go saying he's going to commentate the games. I'm not saying he's going to be Gus Johnson or Tim Brando. What I'm do? saying is he's going to go on college game day. You know what he'll probably do? Like every pro- week or like I one finish? week? Like Can I finish? Sure. Can he start- he'll probably start a podcast that will be sponsored by Aflac, and heaven and the, the richest companies <laughs> ever of all time, and it'll be the number one podcast of all time ever. I After don't know what ours, type of guest Nick ours. Saban gets on. Yeah, second ours, of course, but yeah, yeah you but know, it'd be a great club. second. It would be a great second podcast. I, what just, else? I just don't think. I think Saban, when he's done, he's done. I mean, he'll still have Actually, his hands all in it. Alabama. He'll have his hands on it, but like, I don't see him. Maybe game day for a week. Like, but I don't see him just immersing himself in college football. I would say I stick, stick coaching. to coaching, coach, because the podcast game, like, now you're competition. You yeah. know what I mean? Now now you're competition. Look, I ain't afraid of Nick Saban. <laughs> tell us in the Hold comments. On, there's a gun too. pointed at yeah, your tell, head. Yeah, I know. Wait. Uh, tell us in the comments, too. Does Saban live out the whole contract, or do you think he wins the natty and bolts after this? Brian game? Howard, question. Is there a harder worker in college than Nick Saban? No, no not even close. You want to know how crazy this stuff is? Good buddy of mine. Actually, a couple good buddies of mine, coach for him. Got one doing it right now. He said that Nick Saban pays the janitors to tell him after he leaves who's the first coach that leaves. Just think about for a second how in-depth you have to think, okay, to be able to get to that point. So Nick Saban leaves. He pays the janitor to be like, hey, the running back coach just said screw this, and he's leaving right now. Like, it is, it is deep. It is the, I'll tell you another story. True story that I was told by a certain someone who knows who he is. Their second national championship, he wins at Alabama. So the first one, there was a 45-minute wait to meet the president during the White House tour or whatever. Second national championship. They said the director of ops walks in because in their staff room, the table's really long. Everybody's in there with binders that look like the Harry Potter book collection. All right? And it's no nonsense. It's no, hey, guys, hi, you see that on TV last night? It's, let's get down to business, Mulan style. All right, so the director of ops walks in and he hands Coach Saban the itinerary for the White House visit. And Coach Saban looks at it and goes, what is this? And he goes, well, you got another 45 minute wait until the president comes out and take a picture. And he's like, no, I'm not waiting 45 minutes to take a picture with this guy. And the director of ops is like, coach, it's from the White House. Like, what am I supposed to like say? He's like, I don't care, fix it. <laughs> no, di- no joke, 30 minutes later, Guy walks in, director ops walks in with the itinerary. It's a 15 minute wait. You want to talk about juice? Wow. You want to talk about power? It's more important. You want to talk about juice? What if? (laughs) When you're telling the president how long you're going to wait, just think about, really think. That's a true story. That's a, that is a true story. You know, one guy who can fix the country, let's be honest. Come on. One guy, you want to talk about efficiency? Oh, yeah. Yeah, You want to get the country fixed? Yeah. Hey, Coach Saban, yeah, you want to talk about pressers? Yeah. They're like, hey, we just got a five-star pipeline commitment from right. uh, Canada. If you like that content, go ahead and subscribe because we're going to be balling every day on Crane & Company. Hit that like button while you're at it and go ahead and smash it like Derrick Henry on an ISO run.